Another stimulator of leptin is a, a hormone, which is sometimes referred to both accurately as a hormone and as a cytokine. Now, you've heard me say the term cytokine before. A cytokine is essentially a hormone that regulates immune function or inflammation. One of the most famous and relevant to this conversation is TNF-alpha. TNF-alpha induces leptin secretion, both from fat cells in a little culture or from fat tissue in vivo or from a, you know, a living organism. And TNF-alpha acts directly on adipocytes or fat cells to stimulate leptin secretion. Um, and it, interestingly, with regards to TNF-alpha, we have here a, a somewhat uncommon scenario where you have what is called autocrine signaling. An autocrine signal is when one cell will release a hormone, and then that hormone will act on the very cell that just made it, signaling to that cell to then do something else. So in this case, let's bring that all those pieces together. We have a fat cell, which as a fat cell is getting bigger and bigger, as it's getting more and more hypertrophic, you've heard me discuss previously that as a fat cell is undergoing hypertrophy, it becomes ever more pro-inflammatory. One of the reasons is because of everything I just said, which is TNF-alpha. As the fat cell is getting bigger, it's releasing more and more TNF-alpha. Now, interestingly, as TNF-alpha is circulating through the body, increasing this kind of basal inflammatory tone, so making the body a little more inflamed, what is often referred to as a subclinical chronic inflammation. Subclinical just means that it's not like the patient is coming in with evidence of like severe infectious inflammatory signs, like a septic shock or something. So the inflammation is dialed up a bit, but it's not to the point that it's making the person clinically suffer in any obvious way. So we call it subclinical chronic inflammation. So again, we have the, the uh, f ever fatter fat cell releasing ever more TNF-alpha which is then signaling back onto the very fat cell that just made it potentially or any neighboring fat cells that would be called a paracrine uh, uh, signaling to then start releasing more leptin. So inflammation in this kind of chronic subclinical sense, not in like a, a, an angry, swollen, infected wound, inflammation is capable of increasing leptin. The third and final is unique to women. And that is the effect of steroid hormones. Now, earlier I had mentioned that there are three classes of hormones if we classify them based on structure. One of them was peptide. One of them is steroid. Now, anytime you hear steroid, you should just think of cholesterol because cholesterol is the base um, structure. So the, the tissue or the cell that's making this hormone, the steroid hormone of, of, of interest in the moment, and I'll define, I'll identify which steroid hormones are relevant here, but the cell will take a cholesterol molecule and start manipulating it to create this, what's called a steroid nucleus. That's basically just saying a scaffolding that is based on cholesterol. Then the cell will take that cholesterol molecule and start altering it a little bit, creating any one of the number of steroid hormones. And there are many steroid hormones, not nearly as many as there are peptide, but there are a lot. And in fact, these two are very well known to you. But again, this is unique to women. It's an effect. There might be a modest effect in men, but it uh, pales in comparison to the effect that we see in women. And that is estradiol and cortisol. Now, estradiol might be a hormone that doesn't ring a bell. It might not sound familiar. Often, estradiol is referred to as estrogen in a, in a singular sense. Estradiol is the primary estrogen and if we're using the word estrogen, we should actually be saying estrogens. The term estrogens is more accurate because it's actually a little family of the prototypical female sex hormones. Now, males have estrogens as well, just not as much, and it's less relevant, although not irrelevant. But within the family of estrogens, estradiol is the primary estrogen. So anytime you hear estrogen, you can actually just think estradiol. So estradiol has a stimulating effect at uh, inducing the fat cells to create and release more leptin, but so too does cortisol. So any given amount of cortisol in a woman um, will elicit a greater secretion of leptin. Now, I, I know within generally within the realm of social media, 
a lot of people like to talk about the evils of cortisol in women, and this is why women shouldn't fast or whatever. I've talked about this previously and really attempted to kind of blow that idea up. There is extraordinarily little evidence to support that. In fact, I'm only aware of one single study that's, although I admit this is a tangent, that shows that cortisol levels in a woman will go higher than what you'd see in a man with adoption of a low carb diet. And however, it was temporary. It happened at about week two and then went away. So I really believe that those, that the idea that fasting or a low carb diet is a unique stress on women, that is not a, a valid idea. 